Today we'll be solving this equation. This is the fourth order polynomial equation, also known as quartic equation. First of all, I would like to say that the general solution to this problem does exist. It is called formula Ferrari. Unfortunately, that formula is not very user-friendly. And when somebody gives you a problem like this, they don't expect you to know that formula. So instead, you need to find some other ways to solve this problem. And today, we're going to solve this problem in two ways. First way, you're going to guess the roots of this equation. And the second way, we're going to do some algebraic manipulation with this equation and also find the answer. So let's start with guessing. Obviously, we're not going to do some random guessing. We're going to make educated guesses. First of all, notice that all the coefficients in this equation are integers. Because of that, we can find all rational roots of this equation. To remind you, a number is rational if it can be represented as p divided by q, where p and q, both of them, are integers. Now, it turned out that p has to be a divisor of the constant term here in this polynomial. In this case, it's a factor of 2. And q is going to be divisor of the coefficient in front of the highest power. In this case, it's the coefficient in front of x to the fourth power. And that's also going to be 2. So both p and q are divisors of number 2. And there are four divisors of number 2. It's plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2. Now, if you look at all possible combinations, we find there are actually only six possibilities for the root to be a rational number. It's plus or minus one half, plus or minus one, or plus or minus two. Now, if you plug these numbers into our equation, we can check that two out of the six numbers actually work. It turned out that one half and minus two are the solutions of our equation. And now we can take our polynomial and write it in a slightly different way. We're going to write it like this. We can represent our polynomial as a product of several factors. First of all, we're going to have 2, which is a coefficient in front of x to the fourth power. And then we have terms that are x minus the root of this polynomial. So we have x minus half, and also x minus minus 2. And what's left after this is the quadratic polynomial. In that quadratic polynomial, we have two unknown coefficients right now, and that's coefficient of a and b. And the next thing we need to do, we need to find those coefficients. So how can we do this? First, let's simplify our factoring a little bit. So we're going to combine all these terms together, and we're going to get here a quadratic polynomial. So we see that our fourth order polynomial is actually a product of two quadratic polynomials. And our job now is to find this quadratic polynomial. Now we can do it in two ways. The fastest way actually to do is to divide the fourth order polynomial by this second order polynomial. If you know how to do it, you'll find the answer. The other way to do it is simply open this parenthesis and combine like terms. If you do, you're going to get something like this. And the next thing we need to do, we need to say that in order for this polynomial, polynomial on the left and polynomial on the right, to be equal to each other for any value of x, we need to make sure that the constant terms are equal to each other. So 2 should be equal to minus 2b. Coefficient in front of x should be the same. So 3 should be equal to 3b minus 2a. 
coefficient in front of x squared also should be the same here and here. Coefficient in front of x cubed should be the same. And coefficient in front of x to the fourth also should be the same, but you can see they are the same already. So and now what we need to do, we need to solve the system of this equation. And if you do, we find that a should be minus 3 and b should be minus 1. Notice that we have a system of four equations with two unknowns. In fact, what we can do here is we can use two equations to find this answer. And the next thing we need to do, we need to plug these numbers into the other two equations to make sure that those equations are also satisfied. Because if they are not satisfied, that means that you made a mistake somewhere. But in our case, they are satisfied. So now let's put a and b in this formula. And now we found that this fourth order polynomial could be split into these factors. Now remember this polynomial was equals to zero. So the product of these factors is equal to zero. But that can only be true if at least one of these parentheses is zero. The first factor is going to be zero and x equal to one half. We already know that. The second factor is going to be equal to zero and x equals to minus two. We already know that. The other option is when this quadratic term is zero. And to find which axis give us zero, we simply need to solve this quadratic equation. Just to remind you, if I have a quadratic equation with coefficients a, b, and c, it has two roots, which could be expressed by this formula. So now all we need to do is just plug the coefficients into this equation, and coefficient will be a will be 1, b will be minus 3, and c will be minus 1. If you plug that in, we get the roots, which will be 3 plus or minus square root of 13 over 2. So what we find now is we have four real roots for this equation, four solutions for this equation. These two guys and these two guys. Let's look at another way how we can solve this equation. First of all, notice that this equation is kind of symmetric. The polynomial is actually symmetric. If you look at the coefficients, we find that there's coefficient of 2 here, there's coefficient of 2 here, there's 3 here, there's 3 here. Well, never mind that there's minus. But it looks like we have a lot of symmetry. And when you have something like this, the normal approach is to divide this polynomial by x squared. If you do, this is what we're going to get. Now let's combine the terms with the same coefficients. So we combine terms with twos and combine terms with threes. And that's what we're going to get. But now notice that this term looks like we can get by squaring this term. And in fact, it's really true. So if we take these two terms, and subtract 2, we indeed get x minus 1 over x squared. And now let's use this fact. And if we do, this is what we're going to get. And if you look carefully what we see here, we see the quadratic equation here with respect to x minus 1 over x. So if we introduce new variable t as x minus 1 over x, we indeed get a quadratic equation with respect to t. And if we open parentheses, combine the like terms, this is quadratic equation we're going to get. And if you solve it the way we did before, we find this equation has two solutions. One is minus 3 halves, the other is 3. And now we just need to remember that what we found here is actually x minus 1 over x. So in the first case, we consider x minus 1 over x equals to minus 3 halves. Now if we multiply both parts of this equation by x, we're going to get the quadratic equation 
which again we can solve and find roots of this equation as one half n minus two. In case when t equals three, we get an equation like this. Again, we multiply both parts of this equation by x, and we're going to get a quadratic equation, which we can solve and find the other two roots. And that's it.